Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing rational numbers and operations. So let's start by reviewing classifying rational numbers. So we have this Venn diagram here that we are going to label with these numbers and give an example of each. So let's start with natural numbers. Those are numbers such as one, two, three, four, and so on. That is the most um, specific that we can get. It is positive whole numbers. So that's gonna go right here in this spot. And something like 10 would be a rational number because it's a positive, or would be a natural number because it's a positive whole number. Then from there, we add whole numbers, which is where we add a zero. It still includes all of those natural numbers still includes all of the positive whole numbers, but we add a zero to the set. Then we go to integers, and this is where we start adding negative numbers. We still have not added fractions or decimals, but integers include negative whole numbers. So they still include everything else that we've talked about. They include zero in our positive whole numbers, but now we are going to add negative whole numbers, such as negative 12. And then all of these numbers are rational numbers. And whenever we get to rational numbers, we can add fractions, terminating decimals, and repeating decimals. So the biggest set here would be rational numbers, because it includes all of the other numbers, and it also includes fractions and decimals that stop. So it's going to include something like two thirds, and it'll include decimals that stop something like 3.1, or decimals that repeat like 0 0.3 repeating. Okay, now let's review integer operations. So when we just have whole numbers, we're mostly just gonna be reviewing what happens when you add, subtract, multiply, or divide positive and negative numbers. So let's start with adding. If your numbers have the same signs, then you are going to add the absolute values and keep that sign. If the numbers have different signs, then you are going to subtract their absolute values and keep the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. So this example right here, we are adding my negative number, negative 19, that has a bigger absolute value than three. So I know that my final answer is going to be negative. And then since these are different signs, the three is positive, the 19 is negative, I'm going to subtract them and keep the sign of the larger number. So 19 minus three is 16 and it is negative 16 since 19 had the larger absolute value and that was negative. Okay, now let's look at subtracting. Subtracting is the same as adding the opposite. This can be accomplished by keeping the sign of the first number, changing the subtraction to addition, and then changing the sign of the second number, and then we will just follow addition rules. So let's look at this one right here. I have negative 21 minus 32. I'm going to keep, change this to addition, and then change that to negative. So now you can see I'm adding two negative numbers. So that means my final answer will be negative, and I'll just add 21 and 32, which is 53. So my final answer here is negative 53. Okay, let's look at the next one. We're going to be dealing with multiplying and dividing. Multiplying or dividing two numbers that have the same signs will result in a positive answer. And then multiplying or dividing two numbers that have different signs will result in a negative answer. So same sign, positive, different signs, negative. So number four, I have a negative times a negative, so I know my final answer will be positive. And now I just need to multiply 23 by four. That's 12, carry the one, and I get 92. So my final answer here is positive 92. On the next one, I have a negative divided by a positive, so I have different signs, so I know my final answer will be negative, and thir 39 divided by three is 13. Okay, now we're gonna deal with rational numbers. This is where we add fractions and decimals. So it says we're still gonna follow all of our integer operation rules that we just reviewed. Remember with decimals, you want to line up the place values. With fractions, it can be helpful to get common denominators, 
when adding and subtracting, convert mixed numbers to improper fractions, and cross simplify when possible. And when we're operating with fractions and decimals, we want to convert the number to the same form first. So let's look at number six. I only see decimals, so I don't have to worry about converting them to the same form first, um, but I do wanna make sure I'm lining up my place values. Let's see what's going on here. It said, Dan paid for four shirts to be delivered. Each shirt cost $32.49. Dan paid $7.25 for delivery. What is the total amount that Dan paid? So first thing I'm going to do is multiply the cost of the shirt by four since he ordered four of them. And then I will add that delivery fee back to whatever I get. So let's do 32.49 times four first. And I get $129.96 for the cost of the shirts, the four shirts. And now I'm going to add the delivery fee of $7.25 to that. So the total amount that Dan will pay is $137.21. Okay, let's look at number seven. It says Mrs. Jones needs 16 and a half feet, that's supposed to say feet right there, of border to decorate a bulletin board. She has one pack of border that is three and one fourth feet long and another that is five and a half feet long. How much more border does she need? So she has 16 and a half feet and then she already has three and one fourth foot and five and a half feet. So I'll need to subtract that from the 16 and a half to figure out how much she has left. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to combine what she already has, the three and one fourth and the five and a half. And I notice that I'm dealing with mixed numbers here. I'm just gonna go ahead and convert all of them to improper fractions to make them a little bit easier to deal with. If you want to leave them as mixed numbers, that is fine. I just prefer to work with improper fractions. So that's why I'm gonna do that. So I need to do three and one fourth plus five and a half. So first thing I'm going to do is convert these to mixed numbers. So I need to do three times four, which is 12. So 12 fourths would be equivalent to three and then I'm gonna add that one fourth back and I get 13 fourths. And then plus, I'm gonna do the same thing to convert this one to an improper fraction. Two times five is 10, so 10 over two would be equivalent to that five. And then I have to add one. So I get 11 halves. Okay, I have an issue. I cannot combine these yet because I don't have common denominators. So I can see if I multiply this by a two, then I'll have the same common denominator of four. So I'm gonna multiply both of these numbers by two. And now my new addition problem is 13 fourths plus 11 times two is 22, two times two is four. So now I'm gonna do 13 fourths plus 22 over four, which would be 35 over four. So that is how much border Miss Jones has. She wants to figure out how much more she needs to get to that 16 and a half foot. So I'm gonna do 16 and one half minus 35 over four. So I need to do the same thing with this 16 and a half as I did with the five and a half. I'll have to convert it to an improper fraction and then to a mixed number. So 16 times two is 32 and 32 plus one is 33. So I get 33 over two minus 35 over four. And now I need to convert this to a common denominator of four. So I'm gonna multiply both numbers by two and I get 66 over four minus 35 over four and 66 minus 35 is 31. 
So 31 divided by 4 is how much she needs. 31 fourths foot is how much she needs. But that is hard to interpret. Like if she was going to go to the store, it wouldn't say 31 and a fourth foot of border. It would be talking about it in mixed numbers. Like it would say seven and a half or something like that. So we need to convert this to a mixed number. So I'm going to do 31 divided by four. Four goes into 31 seven times because seven times four is 28 and I'm left with a remainder of three. So the final answer for how much border does she need is seven and three fourths feet. Okay, let's look at number eight. It says, Christy has two and one-fifth gallons of paint. Each gallon of paint will cover 360.5 square feet. How many square feet will Christy be able to cover if she uses all of these gallons of paint? So she has two and one-fifth gallons of paint, and each of those gallons is going to cover 360.5 square feet. So you can tell I'm going to be multiplying here. The issue is I have a fraction times a decimal. So let's go ahead and convert two and one fifth to a decimal so that it's easier to multiply. So I know it'll be two point something. I need to do one divided by five to figure out what the decimal will be. So if I will go into 10 two times. So two and one fifth is equivalent to 2.2. So I need to do 2.2 times 360.5. So I need to do 360.5 times 2.2. And I get 793.1 feet squared. That is how much two and one fifth gallons of paint would cover. Okay, let's look at the last one. It says, what is the value of the expression below? I have 24.65 divided by negative 8.5 or divided by negative eight and a half, but I do wanna go ahead and convert that to negative 8.5 so that I am doing a decimal divided by a decimal. I notice I have it positive divided by negative, so my answer will be negative, and now I just need to do long division to figure out what 24.65 divided by 8.5 is. And we get negative 2.9 for our final answer.